Hello everyone, welcome to the, this Rito 2110 Tech Webinar. One question a lot of you ask me when we see each other, when we were able to see each other was, uh, what's the difference between a narrow sender and a wide sender in 2110? So let me, uh, bear with me, I will explain to you what's the, the difference between both. So narrow sender, let's start with the simple case. Narrow sender send packet with the same timing, the same interval between the packet. We call this isochronous. USB is a isochronous protocol as well. So each the packet will be sent with the same interval. A quick analogy on that is to look at the minute end on a clock. Every minute it's moved from one minute to the other and it's super at the same time. We want this to be at the same time. So that's the narrow sender, that's the easy one. The wide sender, it's more the troublemaker. The white sender could be bursty, could the time interval between packet can vary in time. So what's that mean? That's a, a quick analogy on that is to look at the school crossing um, uh, guard. So when you have kids coming from the school, you can be blocked for a while. Um, but when there is no kid, you, the traffic will go really easily. When a computer start doing processing, it's kind of the guard, he blocked you. So he blocked the car. It's kind of kids coming in. So this make the interval variable and also bursty because at the end, you will have more car that has to go and it's not always the same time between packets. So that's the wide sender and they usually computer. So when the CPU kicks in and do other stuff, your packet can be delayed. So now on my left side, you can see a, a good um, illustration of the narrow on top and the wide sender on the bottom. So that's, uh, what's happened on the network. So now, what's the impact of this wide sender is the question after people ask me usually. So uh, the impact is the receiver has to hold more memory. So we have to add a buffer. So we always continue to send the data in a, in a constant manner. So for that, we need to, to have a buffer. Usually it's 720 packets what's recommended on the buffer size. So Again, on the left side, you can see what it's look like inside the receiver, the number of buffers. Also, you have to be aware that each buffer or each flavor or essence need its own buffer. So you need a video buffer, an audio buffer, and an ancillary buffer. And after that, we have to put them all together to make sure we have a constant flow. So let now, this is simple, this is summarized the narrow and the wide, but there's also one variable you have to know on top of that. There's the linear sender and the gapped sender. So really quickly, a gapped sender, it's aware of the blanking interval. So basically I send packet when my, my, I have an active picture, right? And 2110, I stop during the blanking. So I have a big gap. And after I start with the next line and so on and so on. So the gap sender are VBI and uh, horizontal blanking interval aware. So that's mean that they will stop. The linear sender though, it's kind of a computer, don't have any clue about the uh, blanking because there's not needed in a computer world. So these are the linear sender. So usually the, the, the gap sender are the hardware one and the linear sender are the software one. And like, again, on my left side, you can see a gap sender versus a linear sender. Thanks for watching. For, I hope this presentation was helpful to you and you know more now about the narrow and the wide sender in 2110. For more information, visit readall.net. And again, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.